Okay, so I do not have an intro for you guys because Waterstone's package arrived and I just want to open it up on camera. So a little kind of mess. I don't care. So I think that this is a pre-order of Babel, Babel, whatever it is. Um, I'm not sure though, but we'll find out. That was a good tear, not going to lie. It is Babel Babel, whatever it is. <laughs> I need to actually Google how RF Kong pronounces this title because it's like, do you say it the American way or do you say it the English way? I have no idea. Okay, so. Oh, <laughs> that is stunning i got the um waterstones edition which is signed by the author with the black sprayed edges there it is all signed and pretty <gasps> oh and there's a map inside the cover i love a book that has got a map in it and it's just black hardcover with, I'm gonna say Babel. I'm gonna say Babel. Babel sounds better than Babel, but whatever. Whatever. Okay, now I don't know all about this, so I'm just gonna read you the tagline thingy. An act of translation is always an act of betrayal. Oxford, 1836. The city of dreaming spires. It is the centre of... That sounded really American. The spires. <laughs> the city of dreaming spires. It is the centre of all knowledge and progress in the world and at its heart is Babel, Oxford's university's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation. The tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Orphaned in Canton and brought to England by mysterious guardian Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison but can a student stand against an empire? I'm actually going to google if this is a real university at Oxford because that just because it, if it is I'm going to go drive to Oxford um Probably isn't more. Um, is it? Royal Institute of Translation, Oxford. Okay, I don't think it's a real place. No. No, it's not a real place. I got so excited then. But okay. This is a chunky book as well. Let me see if I can peek at the back of the hole without like getting spoiled. Five, four, six. Five hundred and forty-six pages. It's a chunker. It's like a really like beefy book. But yeah. Okay, that's all I wanted to tell you. I guess I should do an intro now, as I'm already here. So welcome <laughs> to a reading vlog. Um, I'm gonna be vlogging every week in September for Bookoplathon. Um, it's the 2nd of September, I did not film on the 1st, I'm not gonna lie, I totally forgot that I said I was gonna be vlogging September. Um, but yeah, so it's Friday, I'm working at home, and I have not even started my September TV. <laughs> I'm still on my 
August TBR, which is Strange the Dreamer. I'm reading that. I want to finish that this weekend, that's my goal, so that I can start my September TBR. Um, I'll link my September TBR above, um, so I'm not boring you with in this vlog if you've already seen it, or if you haven't, go check that out, and you'll know that what I'll be reading this month. So yeah, at the moment, I'm going to be continue working for the rest of the day until I'm finished, and then um, actually this weekend, Simone from, oh my god, I forgot her name, Beyond Bookish. Simone from Beyond Bookish is hosting a readathon, like a chill, low-key readathon this weekend. Um, some of the times for her sprints are not cohesive to British summertime, um, as she's in Canada, but I will try and make eat the sprints that I can. Probably won't be able to make Friday night sprints because I think they start at like 10 p.m. for me. Um, some something around that night, I'm like, <laughs> girl, I'm gonna be tired. I need my eight hours of sleep. I really don't do well. Um, after 10 p.m. <laughs> Honestly, I'm a grandma in a 24 year old's body. Just saying that. Um, but the ones on Saturday I should be able to because, um, She's starting them in the morning her time, so it would just be the afternoon for me. And yeah, those are the plans for the next couple of days. But I'm sure I say these plans of what I'm going to be doing. It doesn't always turn out like that, so let's just... Oops. What else? <laughs> what is it with teams? I should always put myself on do not disturb, like, every time. Um... Yeah, we'll see how we go <laughs> and if any of my plans actually become reality. I'm back. I also, <laughs> I need to talk to someone because I have an obsession with the Royal House, Royal? Bloody hell. Um, <laughs> the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I am honestly addicted and, you know, don't they say the best first step is admittance? Uh, so yes, I am addicted to the Royal Housewives. Why do I keep saying the Royal Housewives? Oh my god. The Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm addicted to it. I'm now up to season 7 of 12 or 13. I can't remember. And oh my god, it's just the most binge-worthy reality show. I just need to tell you because it's hilarious like <laughs> every every single one of them like Dorit, Erica Jane, Kyle, Lisa, Lisa Rinna they are just crazy just absolutely crazy so yeah just had to tell you that okay <laughs> hey guys it's now Saturday and um afternoon it's half three in the afternoon. Um, I've just joined sprints with Simone and Zoe. Simone's doing an impromptu tw uh, weekend readathon. So I'm hoping that this will help me read Strange the Dreamer. I'm about 65% through the book now. And so far so good. I did say on sprints that uh, I am kind of in the mood of like taking it or leaving it as it is like I'm not I don't I don't feel compelled to sit down and read the book the whole time and I'm listening to the audio while reading the Kindle version and honestly I feel like I might fall asleep so I don't know what's wrong with me or <laughs> wrong with the book to be fair but the book's definitely picking up in um intrigue I guess we've now got the two main characters talking to each other finding more out about each other so I hope that a plan will come together to deal with what's happening um, but yes I um, also wanted to say got another Waterstones 
um, order through today, pre-order. So I wanted to open that as well. So I feel like this week is the week of pre-orders, but I'm, I guess that's what happens when you're in September. Like all the fall autumnal releases are happening. Anyway. Oh, okay. So what have we got? Oh, it's Taylor Jenkins Reid. Carrie Soto is back. So I really like this cover. Actually, I know a lot of people didn't. But I did enjoy it. Um, I got the signed Waterstones edition. So it's signs on the page. And this, if you can tell by the front, is about tennis. She's wearing a tennis outfit. She's on a tennis court. So Carrie Soto is fierce and her determination to win at any cost has not made her popular. But by the time she retires from tennis, she is the best player the world has ever seen. She has shattered every record and claimed 20 slam titles. And if you ask Carrie, she is entitled to every one. She sacrificed nearly everything to become the best with her father as her coach. Javier, a former champion himself, has trained her since the age of two. But six years after her retirement, Carrie finds herself sitting in the stands of the 1994 US Open, watching her record being taken from her by a brutal, stunning British player named Nikki Chan. At 37 years old, Carrie makes the momental decision, momental decision to come out of retirement and be coached by her father for one last year in an attempt to reclaim her record, even if the sports media say that they never liked the battle axe anyway, even if her body doesn't move as fast as it did, and even if it means swallowing her pride to train with a man she once almost opened her heart to, Bo Huntley. Like her, he has something to prove before he gives up the game forever. In spite of it all, Carrie Soto is back for one epic final season. In this riveting and unforgettable novel, Taylor Jenkins Reid tells her most vulnerable emotional story yet. Um... So the premise is something that I would never actually read if I'm being brutally honest. Um, I like Taylor Jenkins read her style of story. I actually really like them. Like I've liked the books that I've read from her so far. Um, like Malibu Rising was an amazing read. Um, so I, so that's kind of why I picked it up. She's kind of turning into an autobo author. So I'm going to see how this goes and see if I like it. Oh, like, these are supposed to be tennis courts, I think. So, yeah. So yeah, there's another book on the shelf. And you can see that the shelf is very full. Okay, I'm going to go back to reading and I shall see you a bit later when I've actually made more progress in this book.
Hello. Um, a lot has changed in like three days. <laughs> um, I haven't vlogged much over the rest of the week um, because so much has happened. I've been so busy and honestly haven't felt like vlogging. Okay, let me give you the rundown of what's happened. Today is Friday the 9th of September. Um, firstly, I bought a flat and I got the keys today and yay, homeowner at 24, I'm very proud of myself. Um, uh, second of all, at my parents' house, where I'm still living, uh, there's been a lot of renovations going on, so the house is just in chaos and noise for the past couple of days, so I haven't wanted to vlog. Um, I have been reading. <laughs> so I finished Strange the Dreamer. I'm thinking of giving it three stars. So the first half was a two star but the second half was a four star. So I think I'm just evening it out to a three. Um, it was a good book. It was a good YA book. Um, there's a few questionable things around age gap romances, um, which I did not. Apparently I've moved on to a busy road, great. Um, apparently, <laughs> um, yeah, so I did not appreciate the age gap romance in this book. I enjoyed the romance for what it was, but I don't understand why one of the characters could have been aged up a bit to make it not a minor <laughs> in a relationship with an adult. Anyway, then I'm also currently reading This Cover Won't Break and I'm glad my mum died. I've been reading physically This Cover Won't Break and I've been listening to the audiobook of I'm Glad My Mum Died. I have not really read much of either of them, but I've been flitting between the two depending on what I'm doing. And then lastly, um, you're probably already aware um, what's going on in the UK at the moment but the Queen died yesterday so <laughs> I feel a bit depressed I'm not gonna lie I feel like I've lost a grandma and I've never even met the woman so I'm really in a weird headspace like me and my mum literally cried to each other last night which was <laughs> great um, so yeah that's happening as well so I feel as though everything's happening at the same time and I'm a bit not, I don't know how to cope, really, so I'm just not doing any of it, okay? Okay, um, so for now we're just going to focus on the good things, and that is, I'm moving out, and I've got my first flat, and yay. So I've literally just picked up the keys, the people I'm buying the flat from gave me a nice cute little uh, housewarming card and now the renovation of, of this flat starts tomorrow which is going to be great <laughs> so yeah I've already taken a few images of what the flat looks like beforehand so I'm just going to lay that over the top here if you want to see like a little empty flat tour thing whatever um and yeah I feel very muted today is that the right word like I'm not jumping for joy which I feel like why aren't I like this is a massive milestone but I think the past day or two with everything that's happening in the country oh and we've got a new prime minister honestly this country I can't yeah, so we got a new Prime Minister on Tuesday as well, which was, yeah. Um, so I'm, I just, I, I feel chaotic, <laughs> but I'm proud that I've got my first flat and I've got the keys. I've got my first card. 
and tomorrow we're gonna be in here I've literally roped in every person every family member I know to help me paint this flat um, yeah I'm not keeping the blue everything's gonna be white <laughs> I'm not keeping the blue <laughs> but yeah so look forward to having a whole bookshelf now one that isn't got five stacks in front of it anymore it's uh it should be good to have an actual bookcase rather than just messy messy shelves okay cool i shall see you later It's now Monday morning now and I'm just gonna wrap up the vlog here <laughs> because this week has been so weird and I just need to catapult straight into this coming week now from the 12th <sighs> um, I managed to finish a book yesterday I finished I'm glad my mum died by Jeanette McCurdy I listened to this on script so it was very easy for me to just sort of do my day to day you know painting while listening to it and stuff um my weekend was very busy in terms of just painting my flat and trying to get that all together yeah because like i showed you that the wall was blue so it's taken like five coats of paint to cover it because i want everything to be white and just sort of like cohesive and just like one color <laughs> the amount of colors is just scary to me um, yeah, so I finished I'm Glad My Mum Died and I really enjoyed the book. I gave it five stars in the end. It was very difficult to read at some points and very, well, I mean, you can probably guess by the title, it's a tough read. And it was so fascinating to see, you know, how emotional manipulation works in familial relationships. Um... And it's, yeah, really interesting. It was tough to read about um, all the trigger warnings in this, book, in this book of, like, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, what other, what others was that? Oh, eating disorders. That was particularly tough. Um, there's just so much in this book. I can't really deal with it. Um, but it was such a good read and it's such a quick read as well if you're listening at like 1.5 times speed which is not not that fast um or on audio the book's only about five hours long which for like normal length books is pretty pretty short um so yeah it was a good book to get through quickly um yeah, I would definitely say if you're not happy with those trigger warnings, don't read the book because I do delve into all of them very graphically. Um, and also, one thing that Mel Reads has said on her video, um, she was saying that because of Jeanette's um, first person writing in the book, you're you're basically going along with Jeanette throughout her childhood as though it's happening today and I think she was right in saying that it very much it very much ties you in and makes it all that much more real because 
you're reading this book from the point of view of a six-year-old being like, I have to put mummy first because then she won't freak out and verbally assault me. Like, it's tough reading that. But I really enjoyed it, which don't read too much into that, okay? Because it was a good book. It just was. And yeah, Jeanette McCurdy's writing was also very good. Very poignant as well. And uh, I would, if you can get past the trigger warnings, I would say really read this book because it does sort of make you re reevaluate how easy it could be for someone to come into her life as a narcissist like her mother was eventually um, portrayed as and how they can quite so easily sort of manipulate you and take control over your own feelings that you know you would then react to situations to please them rather than reacting how you would instinctively want to and from like the psychological aspect that is so interesting to read about yeah that was my <laughs> little spiel about I'm glad my mum died so yeah I would say even though this week has been very up and down I've had highs of buying my first flat and getting the keys to it and also lows of you know the national mourning that um, my country's in at the moment um all in all, I think it's been a good week in terms of reading. I managed to finish two books, Strange the Dreamer and I'm Glad My Mum Died. I'm still reading This Coven Won't Break. I will not lie that I'm only on page one. Um, when I say I'm currently reading it, I've read the first sentence and then put it back down. So I'm actually going to start reading that one for real now in the new weekly reading vlog that I'm going to be starting straight after this clip. But yeah, so that was the first full week and a little bit extra of uh, the first week of Bacoplathon. And I've read one book out, off of my September Bacoplathon TBR. And it's already the 12th of today. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. But yeah, so hopefully week two of Bacoplathon will be much better in terms of accomplishing all the September reads that I need to fulfil. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna, if you like what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you leave me a comment about what you've read this week. It, did you like it? Did you not like it? Why? Let me all, let me, let me know all the th all the thoughts, all the feelings. And yeah, I will see you in next week's video. I hope you guys are all well and safe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.